This is a Tai Chi video brought to you by the Middletown Senior Center. My name is Lisa Gibson and I'm your instructor. So before we begin the class today, what I'd like to say is we're going to give you a brief overview of what we'll be doing, but also to have, if you can, a chair nearby because we will be using that um, for some of the exercises that we're doing. And you also may want to sit down at certain points. So we're going to start with what I call Tai Chi warm-ups. And basically what we'll be doing is just sort of doing some stretching and some movements to sort of relax the body, open up the chest, relax the shoulders, and just sort of open those joints a little bit, the ligaments and the tendons. Then from there, we will move on to a little bit of balance. And we do balance work uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that within the Tai Chi movements, we're constantly shifting our weight from one leg to the other, except for the opening movement. So one leg is heavy, one is light, there's softness, hardness. So balance is important to practice. And also as we age, we start to lose our balance. So it's really good to be working with it and keep strengthening that aspect of ourselves. Um, from there, we'll move into some uh, Qigong exercises and I'll explain a little bit about what Qigong is for those who don't know. And then we'll do one or two movements from a Chen style Tai Chi form. And then finally, we'll end with some standing meditation. So let's begin. So what I'd like you to do is stand with your feet about shoulder width or hip width apart. And just stand, think, think of being one inch taller, sort of lengthens the spine, opens the chest. And we're gonna just turn from side to side. We're gonna keep our knees slightly bent and we're just turning our waist. So we turn from one side to the other. This is just a nice gentle movement to start. It's a great way to start the day. And basically as you're doing this movement, what you see is that your shoulders and your head just follow as your waist turns. So I'm not exerting a lot of energy here. It's just the waist turning. When the waist turns, it brings my arms with it. So a lot of um, Tai Chi and Qigong is about energy efficiency. So right now I'm looking at the camera, but what that means is that we're only utilizing the muscles that we need to. The other ones can just remain relaxed in a relaxed state. We don't need to use them. So for example, in this movement here, I'm not like thinking of bringing my arm. I'm not using this force to bring my arm to one side. It's just my waist. And you can sort of see this when I use a little bit more force in turning the waist. My arms are just sort of swing along and follow. So with this movement, this is a great way just to start. Just let the waist turn. Keep those knees slightly bent. Now another point that I'd like to say here is when I'm turning my waist, it's important to not start to turn your knees at all. So it's just, again, it's just my waist turning. So what you don't wanna have happen is I'm gonna demonstrate this exaggerated, the knee going in like that or going inward. We don't want that. So it's really just the waist turning, the knees are in alignment with the toes and the toes are pointing straight ahead. Okay, I'm just gonna move forward for a minute. So keep going with that. And when you start, again, you can go nice and slow, particularly if you're just starting out with this. And then as you're more comfortable and your body warms up, you can put a little bit more effort into that turning. We breathe naturally throughout all these exercises. We're not holding our breath. Okay, now we're gonna continue that movement. What we're gonna to start to do is shift our weight from one leg to the other so that we can pivot. So I'm gonna stand back a little bit and I'm just for now gonna have my hands on my waist. So I think you can see in the frame, 
that this, I pivoted on the heel of this foot and the toe is up. So how I do that is I just put the weight into that one leg and then I can turn and pivot on the heel of the other foot. So this is a nice way to just get used to shifting the weight from one leg to the other. And it's fairly easy when the weight is in the one of the legs. So sometimes beginners have a little bit of, or they struggle a little bit with this because they're not really getting the weight, sinking the weight down into the leg so that they can turn. So this should feel pretty comfortable as you're doing this. Now, once you have the hang of that, let's just add the arms back in. So we're basically turning from one side to the other side, shifting the weight from one leg to the other so that we can pivot on the heel of the foot. So this should feel really relaxed and gentle. It's a gentle movement. Shoulders are relaxing. We do a lot um, of warm-ups involving the shoulder and opening the chest. The shoulders in particular because we store a lot of tension there. We want to release it. So these warm-ups, they're sort of key for mobilizing our chi. Now chi uh, is considered your sort of your life energy, your vital force. And you hear that a lot, you know, it's in Tai Chi, Qigong. And so we want to get with these warm-ups, we want to sort of have our getting our blood to flow and getting our mobilizing our chi. So it is said, some people say that the chi follows the blood. But basically, we're trying to open our joints so that the chi can flow through these spaces. Okay, good. All right, that's some of the first warm ups that we've just done. Now we're going to do swinging arms where we bring our arms up, the palms are facing up, then we turn them over and we let them come down. This is another good movement, just for relaxing the shoulders. Again, here, I my arms come up and let them come down, not exerting a lot of energy here. When they come down, there's sort of this momentum that wants to bring them up again. Now, as I'm doing this exercise here, my lower body is stationary. So my knees are slightly bent, but what we're not doing is going up and down like this, okay? Just same height, all we're doing is bringing the arms up, letting them turn down, and they come up again. I'm just gonna stand from the side. So again, let that momentum bring them back up. When they're back up to about chest level, turn the palms over. Breathe naturally. Generally, when we're bringing our arms up, we're inhaling, exhaling as they go down. This movement should just feel almost effortless. Almost like you could just stand here all day doing that, but we're not. <laughs> okay, good, let's move on. So the next thing we're gonna do as a warm up is we're gonna just do some overhead stretching. So we're gonna interlace our fingers down at our lower abdomen. Again, we're standing about feet shoulder width or hip width apart. We're just gonna raise our arms up. And notice as I raise my arms up, I'm not raising my shoulders, just raising my arms. And then about chest level, just turn the palms out and then continue raising the arms. Get a nice stretch in there. Now, if you're not able to raise them this high, that's fine, you can just raise them to whatever level you can get to. But if you can, really stretch up. And now you're going to take an inhalation, you inhale, and then as you exhale, turn to the right. Just turn your waist to the right. Inhale back to the center, and then exhale as you turn to the opposite side. And let's just do this a few times.
okay? Now as we're back to the center, we're gonna stretch over to the right. So we inhale first, and then exhale, stretch over to the right, get a nice stretch in the side. Uh, then come back to the center, and now stretch over to the left. And we're gonna do this a couple more times. And one more. Good. Now bring your arms down. We're just gonna fold over from the waist. So make sure your knees are bent. So just sort of fold over. And then just release your hands, just relax your arms. So just hanging down. And take some nice deep breaths. And then we're gonna slowly start to come up. And we're just gonna do that by turning our waist from side to side. Keep your knees bent, slightly bent. And with each turn, you just come up a little bit. So in yoga, you'd say, if you were doing yoga, we're just coming up one vertebrae at a time. The legs are nice and strong. The upper body is relaxed. It's almost like the legs are the trunk of a tree, the arms are like branches, and there's just a wind, they're swaying back and forth. And then you're slowly rising. Good, okay. Let's do some shoulder rolls. So we're gonna bring our shoulders up, then bring them back so you really open the chest here. Shoulders come down and then forward and back up again. And we continue this movement like we're making a circle. Up, back, down, and forward. Just do that a couple times at your own pace. Okay, now let's bring our shoulders up. We're gonna continue with shoulder rolls, but we're gonna do it in the opposite direction. So they're up, now they go forward, down, and back. And again, you're making that sort of circle. And Continue with this just a few times at your own pace. So we're really working with the shoulders here, relaxing, opening up the chest. Remember to breathe. And this will be our last. Bring them up forward and down. Good, good. All right, let's do some neck stretches. So again, knees are slightly bent, shoulders dropped. On the inhale, inhale first, and then exhale as you turn your head to the right and gaze over that right shoulder. Inhale back to the center, turn your head, and then gaze over the left shoulder. Come back to the center and go then to exhale to the other side. We're going to do this a few times. Now here you're going to just lower your head and then make a slow, gentle sort of half circle over to the other side. Raise the head, 
lower it, and then circle back. The other side. We inhale as we bring our head up. We exhale as we bring the head down and make that circle over to one side. And let's just do one more. And then just bring your head to the center. Okay. The next thing we're gonna do is we'll be rotating our arms. So you can stand with your feet wider apart if you can. Knees are slightly bent. And just have your arms outstretched. This is a good stretch right here just to do this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and you're just gonna rotate your arms so that your palms are first facing down. And then continue that rotation so now my thumbs are pointed down and then I go a little bit more. This is a nice gentle stretch. Don't, it should not hurt, just do what you can with it. Then we're gonna bring, rotate again so that we bring our palms facing up. And now we're gonna to try to rotate in the opposite direction, okay? And just do this a few times, going the opposite way. Here I've got my thumbs down again and I rotate a little bit more. Whatever you can do is, is fine. Now with all these um, stretches, the exercises, the forms, one thing to remember is, is there should be no pain when we do these. So the new motto in terms of when we talk about Tai Chi and Qigong is no pain means more gain, gain more. These are gentle movements. All right, now I've got my palms up again. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put the weight into one leg. So I started here with the weight and sort of even. Now I've got the weight in one leg. I'm gonna gaze at the palm of the hand where I've got that weight in this leg. Meanwhile, notice what's happening with this other arm. It's rotating so that the palm is facing up here. Now I'm gonna switch, I put the weight into the other leg and I'm rotating both arms. So I'm gazing at the arm that's where the palm is up on this side where the weight is. And then we keep going back and forth, just a little bit. It's a little different type of rotation. Okay, good, and just bring your arms down. And if you're feeling any stiffness, just, just do a little bit of circles again, your shoulders, okay. Good, now let's do some hip rolls. So we're gonna just make circles with our hips. Um, those of you who did the hula hoop when you were a child or maybe even now know this. You just, this can be a big circle, it can be a small circle whatever feels right for your body. And let's reverse that circle. Good. Okay, now we're gonna move on to a little bit of balance. So this is where the chair comes in handy. If you don't have a chair nearby, you can also use a wall. I'm gonna be using the chair to show you. So this first exercise that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be raising our heels. So I have a chair like this. Um, you can also have the chair to the side of you, or you can be using the wall. So right now, my feet are flat on the ground. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to raise our heels. So my heels are raised. You can see my body has gone up. I'm holding that. Now you could be holding the chair or not holding the chair if you don't need it. And then just let the heels go flat. And we're just gonna do this a couple of times. So now I'm raising my heels again on my toes. 
So this is a balance. We're maintaining our balance as we're doing this. And then we bring it down. Let's do a couple more times. Okay, and then again. And then down. Good, pretty easy, huh? So we're gonna add on a little something to this that makes it a bit more challenging. And it's actually surprising that it makes it more challenging the first time I did this. So again, you've got the chair to use as support. I'm gonna demonstrate. What we're gonna do is we're gonna raise our heels again, same thing. Only difference is now we're gonna be turning our head from one side to the other side, okay? So you need the chair, use it for support. Raise your heels. And now I'd like you to turn your head from one side. Yep, feel that? It's a little wobbly there. Back to the center, still keeping your heels raised, and then turn your head to the other side. Okay. Back to the center. And turn again. You know the heels are still up, so now you're maintaining this balance while you're moving your head. So keep going. Okay, back to the center and down, okay. Um, you can shake out your legs a little bit, <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. All right, uh, the next balance we're gonna do, and you notice I have a chair now to the side of me, is I'm gonna demonstrate first. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be raising one of the knees up. We're gonna try to have the foot flat, so it's not like to hang down like that, it's sort of flat here. That will be the first part of it. And then we're going to let the leg go back and then up again if we're taking a step. Okay. So again, you can use the chair for support. If not the chair or wall, or you don't need to use anything at all, it depends on you. Okay. And how high you bring the knee is also up to you. So we're going to start. We're going to have the weight go into one leg. Okay. And raise the other knee. So in this case, I have my left knee raised. And then foot's flat. And now just let the leg go back and then bring it forward as if you're gonna be stepping. Going up a stair here, stepping here. And just do this a few times. So once again here, we are maintaining our balance while we have this motion going. More. You always have that chair to hold on to. Good. Okay. We're going to do the other leg. So I'm just going to move the chair to the side here. Now I'm going to raise the opposite knee. Okay. So foot is flat. Same thing here. Maintain your balance. Bring the leg back. Up, if you're stepping, go back. I hope you're breathing. Don't hold your breath as you do this. And do one more. I shouldn't have laughed, I almost lost my balance there. Okay, good. All right, so let's just shake our legs a little bit. So we're gonna do one more balance. This will be a little bit different to sort of work with our hips a little bit. So I'm gonna demonstrate, and there's three ways that you could be doing this. So one way is basically we'll be utilizing our arms, sort of bringing them into a prayer position, and we'll be raising one of the legs up. So here's, uh, I'm going to show you version one. I'm just going to demonstrate. So one is as I bring my arms up into the prayer position, I just bring my knee up a little bit, point it out to the side, and my toe is maybe touching the floor, but I've got all the weight in this other leg. Another way of doing it is you could bring it higher. Now my foot's really off the floor. 
And then the final way is if you're feeling really comfortable with this movement, you can bring it higher. So see that it's much higher at this point. So whatever you're comfortable with. Hands. So what I find is in this position with the palms pressing together, the elbows out, and sort of this prayer position, it actually helps me to hold the balance. Okay? Do, um, so that helps you do that. So let's start. We're going to be going from one leg to the other. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm going to now do the opposite. So start to bring your arms down, then up into the prayer position. Remember, you can be just touching the floor lightly with this foot. Okay, now the other side. Let's do one more. Good. Okay. So that's it for the balance today. Let's um, sort of do a little bit of self massage through the thighs. And then continue down your legs and do the inner legs, the outer legs. Now I'd like you to take the sides of your hands and sort of slice into the thighs a little bit. Okay, move into the slacks. And our blood flowing. Inner legs, outer legs. Hips. Okay. And then finally, let's make soft this and just lightly tap the thighs or lightly punch from one to the other. Okay, good. So let's complete this segment of the video. We're gonna bring our arms up, raising up my heels, and then let the arms come down and slap down, okay? Let's do that again. Inhale, come up, slap down. One more time, inhale up, heels are raised, I'm on my toes and slap down. Good. Then let's complete this with three circles where we bring our arms up, inhale, nice inhale. Exhale, bring that energy down. Knees are bending, weight is sinking down. Energy goes through the body, out through the legs and the feet. Inhale again, bring that energy up, gather more energy. Exhale, bring it down. And one more time. Good, good. Okay. So we're gonna move into doing some Qigong. So one thing I wanna say um, about this class, a lot of these movements, if you're feeling tired, you can also do them, uh, particularly the ones, the arm movements from the chair. So when I show you some of these movements and you're, you feel like, well, maybe I wanna sit down, do that and just put, you can continue just doing the arm movements, okay? So we're gonna do a few movements um, from a Qigong form known as the eight pieces of brocades. This is one of the earliest Qigong, um, it's foundational, that originated in China. And basically, so when we talk about Qigong, a lot of people say, well, what does that mean? Well, I've said in the earlier that qi is your life energy. Also, some people refer to, refer to it as your vital force. Um, and basically, uh, when we talk about this internal energy, both Tai Chi and Qigong, they're part of traditional Chinese medicine which teaches that pain and disease result, results from blocked energy. So through a combination of doing these types of the, um, slow, gentle movements, the controlled, breathe, the controlled breathing, the calm mind, our internal energy, our chi can flow more efficiently. 
uh, more efficiently through the internal pathways for our body, okay? The whole energy, human energy system. So anyway, so I mentioned chi, life energy, gong. What does that mean? Well, it can be defined as sort of work or mastery. So in some ways you can say when we do qigong, we are working with our internal energy. And the goal of both, you know, qigong and tai chi is we're sort of nurturing and cultivating this internal energy. And that's one of the reasons why I say we want to be efficient with our energy. We don't utilize the muscles we don't need to. We just use what we need to. And then we want to get this qi flowing smoothly throughout our body. So, uh, with the eight pieces of brocade, this uh, it's a series of eight movements, and basically it was designed to strengthen our internal organs. Right? It also improves the health. Um, right? It also improves our health. It regulates and influences specific body functions. So each of the movements um, is done for a specific reason. So we're going to start with the first one, which is two hands hold up the sky, or two hands press the heavens. Okay, so. We're standing with our feet about shoulder width apart, hip width apart. We're going to interlace our fingers at the lower abdominal area. This is also the area known as the lower dantian. And on the inhalation, my knees are slightly bent here. We're going to slowly rise up, lengthen our body, we're bringing our arms up. At chest level, the palms turn out, and then the arms continue to go up. Sort of like a little bit like the first. Um, overhead stretch we did. At this point, I'm gazing at my hands, but then as my arms come back closer to my ears, the gaze is forward. Now, the exhale, weight sinks down and the arms lightly come down. Now, this is a very slow movement. So, you notice I said the inhalation is this first part, right? All this, the inhalation. And then the exhalation is the arms coming down. So when you do this, if you need to take extra breaths, do that. Don't hold your breath. Okay. Now as you're doing this with me, Turn your palms, you raise your arms, you first gaze at those hands, then gaze forward. Exhale, let those arms come down nice and slow. There's a slight resistance as if your arms are coming down through water. So you're relaxed, but not limp. So this first movement opens the chest and the lungs. We're increasing our chi circulation. But this one in particular also opens the triple burner. And in the Chinese system, the triple burner refers to three specific areas. In the torso, so your upper would be the heart and the lungs. The middle, spleen and the stomach. And the lower, the kidneys and the intestines. And then some of the other organs fall into those as well. So we're really talking about benefiting our breathing, our respiration, our digestion, and our elimination. And let's just do one more. So before we move on to the next movement, let's just sort of do what I call a recharge. We bring our arms up, 
Nice inhale, exhale, pull that energy down. Okay, the second movement is draw the ball and let the arrow fly. So I'm going to demonstrate this movement first. Just going to move this chair over a little bit more. So first thing you'll notice here, my feet are wider apart. And when my weight sinks down, I bend my knees. The weight is evenly distributed on both legs, so I don't have more weight on one than the other. I just bring the weight straight down. One thing as I do this, my knees are in alignment with my toes, so I never bend down. You don't need to bend down far at all. The knees should not extend beyond your toes. You just do what's comfortable for you with that. Okay, so this is also called a horse stance. Basically, what I'm going to be doing here, I'm going to be bringing the arms together. And then, essentially, I'll be drawing back one hand across the chest as if I'm drawing the bow. And my other arm is outstretched. So, with this outstretched arm, it's as if um, I'm gazing at my hand, but notice I've got the forefinger is up and the thumb. They're forming like an L. So, that's... The complete movement and I'm gazing far beyond that hand as if I'm gazing at a target and when I'm doing this my weight is still 50 50 on both legs so that's the key here I'm not leaning over like this as I do it okay I'm not going forward I'm not leaning back all right so let's do this together so feet wider apart just start we're going to start one more upright arms are together that's, this is the, at this point, we're going to then sink down. This is the exhalation. I'm drawing this hand across the chest. The other one is out. Then I inhale, rise up, and now we're going to do it to the opposite side. So here I'm drawing my right hand back. My left is extending out. I'm gazing at that target somewhere out there. Inhale, come up. Now we switch to the other side. Line his hand across the chest. Gazing out. So as you're doing this, you can feel that this is strengthening your legs. This up and down movement. It also strengthens the waist area. The back, to strengthen the kidneys. But this movement in particular also really, you know, you're opening the chest and the lungs. Helps with elasticity in the shoulders. And I'm also working the eyes as I'm really gazing that target that's out there way beyond my hand. And let's just do two more. So the inhale, you rise up. Exhale, that weight sinks down. Let that go, let the arrow fly. Good. Bring your arms down. Inhale up. And exhale. So let's bring our legs a little bit closer together now. We're now about hip width, shoulder width apart. We're gonna move on to the third brocade, which is separate heaven and earth. I'll demonstrate first. Basically, as we stand here, the knees are slightly bent. Our palms are facing up. They're situated at the lower abdomen, the bent end. And essentially what's gonna happen here is one arm is gonna raise up while the other one is going down. 
And I'm gonna move back a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna bend down so you can see this. So when this arm is up, wherever arm is up, the palm is facing the ceiling. Okay? So it's as if I'm pushing an object up. This other hand, the other arm, which is down, is like there's an object that's pushing down. So you've got this opposing movement. Feel that this nice stretch in here. Then we're going to switch. So the arm that was up starts to come down. The other one is slowly coming to meet it at the same place. And then they switch. Now this arm is moving up. And the other one's pressing down. So as I'm doing this, you notice I'm staring straight ahead. So I'm not gazing up at my hand. I don't need to gaze up. I'm just looking straight ahead. So let's do this together. Let's start. We're going to bring the right arm up. The other one is pressing down. This is all the inhale. Then exhale. Bring that right arm down. It starts to rotate. So the palm is facing the chest as it comes down. The other hand is moving up to meet it. And now this one is rising. Same thing here, if you need to take extra breaths, do so. Generally, this is the exhale here as it's coming down. The weight is also sinking down a bit to the knees are bending. Inhale, I'm lengthening my body. Feet remain flat on the ground. So this movement is said to be very good for helping the stomach and the spleen. So as you're doing this, you can feel, you know, with this opposing force, it's almost like as if it's massaging the abdominal cavity, which it said then to sort of massage those internal organs. And it really is a nice movement for feeling that stretch to both sides. Let's do a few more. Notice as this arm comes up, palm is facing in, and then the arm rotates out. The palm is facing the ceiling. Let's recharge. Okay. So we're gonna move on to one more of the apron case, the fourth one. This is wise owl gazes backwards. It's one of my favorite ones. I'll demonstrate first. So again, big shoulder width, hip width apart. This time the palms are facing down in front of the body. And essentially what happens here is I start to bring my arms back. And what I'm going to do is turn my head from one side to one side. And at the same time it's turning, both arms are rotating. So in this case, I'm turning my head. And then my gaze goes back and down to that hand. So I'm just going to turn to the side so you can sort of see what's happening with this rotation. I'm really rotating the arms. It's almost like my pinky is going up now, okay? And then after that turn in that rotation, it's just bringing both arms back to that starting position, okay? So let's do this together. We're gonna start, we're gonna, knees are slightly bent. This is now the inhale, we'll bring our arms back. We're gonna turn our head to the right and 
both arms are rotating, and I'm gazing back at that right hand. Then exhale, come back to the center, starting point. This is the neutral position. We just drop down. Now inhale, and now we're going to do the neck the other side. Arms go back, head turns, same time you're rotating the arms. Gaze back at that hand, and then exhale back to that neutral starting position. Let's keep going with this. As you can see with this, so we are gazing back and down. So this is the wise owl gazing backwards because we're not going turning as far as an owl really. But it's a, it gives you a nice gentle stretch in the neck. I think I like this one so much because I'm on the computer a lot and it's really helpful to get the stretch in. The other thing I like about this one is that you're also stretching your eyes. Because you're not, you're looking back, but you're also looking down. This movement is also opening up the chest. And it's said to be very good for the central nervous system, relaxation, calmness. Let's just do two more. So we're going to move on. That's just four of the eight brocades. I can see a sense of them. And they're all great movements. And like I said, they work on specific organs and, and um, specific, specific functions that they're good for. So we're going to do maybe one or two movements from a Chen style Tai Chi form. And one thing I'd like to say, so um, some people, uh, one of my teachers looks at Qigong sort of as this umbrella concept of nurturing your Qi. And you could actually say that Tai Chi falls under it because within the Tai Chi form, you're also nurturing, nurturing cultivating your Qi, but there's also the martial arts aspects to it. Um, we're going to do one of the movements I'm going to take out of a Chen style. It's uh, cloud hands or wave hands like clouds. If you've done Tai Chi before, you've seen a version of this depending on what style that you're doing. A lot of people do Yang style Tai Chi. Chen style is a little bit different. There's also Sun style, Wu style, Hun Yan. So cloud hands may look a little bit different depending on the style that you're doing. So I'm gonna demonstrate with the two hands first. We're gonna start working with a single cloud hand. So two hands would be, and I'm doing stationary here. So even though I'm shifting weight from one leg to the other, I'm not doing the movement that would be involved within the form. All right, so we're going to start with single cloud hands. It's a good way to start because you're not focusing on what's happening with both hands, which can get a little bit confusing. So we're going to start just using with one arm. So right now I've got my right hand on my waist. My left hand is just coming up. I'm going to do this. You can do this. Your feet can be wider than hip width shoulder apart to do this, um, this little bit. Knees are slightly bent. Body is straight. Just bring the arm up, 
my left arm up, and I'm bringing it up about chest level here. One thing to watch for is the shoulder. We don't want the shoulder to be rising up like that. It's gonna cause a lot of tension. So just like drop the shoulder, elbow slightly bent here. So I've got this arcing here. And I've got about, at this point, more weight on this side, maybe about 60 to 70% of the weight. Now, the palm right now is facing up. We're gonna rotate the arms. You can see why we do a lot of this arm rotation. It's in our warm-ups. It's in Qigong movements, it's here as well. This has a lot to do with the spiral energy um, in the system. But here, so we're gonna now rotate it so the palm is facing more out. And essentially what we're gonna do is just shift the weight into the other leg and turn the waist. And this arm that's up just stays there. And then it extends out, it rotates so the palm is facing down. And now the weight goes into the other leg and the arm is coming down and then coming up. When it's up, it then rotates. And now the weight goes into the other leg. I'm just turning my waist here. Rotate, let the arm come down. It's coming down close to the body. And then it just rises up. So let's talk about a little bit about energy efficiency. So here, the arm has come up and I've rotated. So in a sense, it's in position right here. Once I'm, as I'm shifting the weight, I've got the weight shifted, I'm just turning the waist. So I'm not doing anything with the arm at this point. It's right in the position it needs to be in. It's only then at the end, I extend it out, rotate so it's facing down, and let the arm come down. So, um, common thing when people are learning push hands, they're really concentrating on what's happening with the arms, they're over using the muscles. It's really just the waist turning. So we just wanna simplify it, okay? Another thing, key point I wanna talk about is when the arm comes down, same thing with what I talked about with one of the April Cades is when this arm comes down, it's like it's moving, gliding through the water. There's that slight resistance. It's relaxed, but again, it's, it's alive. It's not limp, okay? Let it come down, bring it up, rotate. So let's just do that a few times. I won't talk. Oh, I do need to talk. <laughs> so, two other points. So why, where is my gaze? I'm right now looking at the camera, at you. But in this movement, when the arm is about chest level, chest height, I'm just sort of following as my waist turns. Kind of like when we were doing the initial movement where we're just turning our waist, your head follows. So same thing here, I'm following it. However, when the palm turns down, the arm goes down, I'm just following, my head remains sort of stationary. I'm not bending over to look down at it. I'm not breaking my form. I just kind of, here I am ready to move it again. going to switch now. So um, one of the things, if you need to take a break, take a break, but something about the arm. So right now, I'm really not tired with this arm. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm not utilizing, not using muscles I don't need to be using. So that's one of the things about, also that's helpful when you really just let the arm turn with the waist, the waist turn, it brings the arm, is that I'm not exerting my arm strength in any way. Okay, so we're just switching. Now we're doing the opposite side, the opposite arm. Bring it up. Again, think about, okay, got that shoulder there, right? And I'm turning. Now rotate. Weight goes into the other leg. Rotate, one faces down. Let the arm come down, you're turning your waist. 
So that's the cloud hands, just doing the single, single arm. I think we will stop there for today with this video. Um, I'm going to move next into doing some standing meditation. So uh, within the Tai Chi system, meditation is a big part of it. Seated meditation or standing, particularly in standing, we're going to this place of inner calm. We're also going to strengthen you strengthen your body with standing meditation. So it can be done a lot of different ways. Most people, if you've seen it, you're used to seeing someone holding sort of almost like this ball. Also, as if you have got your arms around a tree trunk. We're going to do that, but I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can do it as we're standing. First of all, if you want to be standing with, again, shoulder width, hip width apart, knees slightly bent, relax your joints, your hips, your knees, your ankles. Relax your shoulders. So maybe just bring your shoulders up, down, just relax. Body straight, I think one inch tall, that's really helpful. Okay. And then we're going to bring our arms as if we're holding a ball. I'm going to show you this way. My pelvis is just neutral, just dropped. My elbows are slightly down, they're not up like that. So really relaxed here. Arms are sort of facing each other a little bit here. Now this is, I'm holding it at chest level. You can, if you, as we stand here, you can stand for a few minutes. If you start to feel fatigue, any pain, you can bring your hands down. You might bring them down to the lower Dantian level, like that. You can also just bring your arms all the way down. And just have your fingers pointing down as if they're coming to the earth, the energy's coming to the earth. Right, so let's start. Um, you can close your eyes, keep them open, whatever's comfortable for you. Tell me if the group of you now, chin is slightly tucked down, so you don't want to be wet and chin up. You don't want to be looking down like that either. And let's just hold this position. Just breathe naturally. If you feel any areas of tension, just breathe into them. And as you're standing, we often have our monkey mind, so you might have thoughts coming in on what I need to do later, what I haven't done yet. So the thoughts come in and go, no need to attach to them. Another thing that's often helpful when doing a standing meditation is you can also imagine that you're standing in water, to your neck maybe, and this water is helping to support you. But also, if the water might be just, you know, swaying a little bit back and forth, there might be some ripples in it. You can even allow your body just to move gently back and forth. This can help relax your muscles.
you're comfortable, you can keep your arms where they are. If you're starting to feel a little tension, if you want to just bring them down and feel a little bit different. And as you're standing, you have a slight smile that relaxes your facial muscles. Now, if you've had your eyes closed, just open them. Just let your arms come down. This is just a short uh, standing meditation for today. Let's say we're going to bring our arms out to the side, rotate the arms, bring them up, nice inhale. Exhale. Let the weight sink down, let the energy drop down in the body. Up at the feet. Let's do that again. Time. Let's bring our hands to our back abdomen, one on top of the other. Just make circles, rotating our energy center here. This is also good for your digestion. And then reverse that circle. Good. And bring your hands to your heart. And let's just feel a moment of gratitude. And then release your hands. So um, that ends the class for today. I want to thank you for joining.